for another episode of Strength for the Journey. We are so happy that you've joined in and we are glad to host you this evening. We've been requested to shed some light uh, by the parents on issues of drugs and substance abuse, especially during this season um, of a time when we have had our children stay more at home no one pre-planned for this season, so we all found ourselves with a lot of time and very little to do with that much time. While they are meant to have been engaged in schools, with their schoolwork and as usual, the regular routine that we all as parents prepared to keep moving on as we work and pay school fees and feed and, and clothe our children, times have changed and because of that, there has been this issue confronting our parenting and of all the issues there are quite a number of issues that parents have requested that we keep shedding light on but of all the issues that has has been uh, given drug and substance abuse is perhaps one of the subjects that raises the most concern in parents with the wrong closure so what do we do? There is this uh, world, the World Health Organization has come up with a research about drug and substance abuse. William, would you want to tell us about it? Yeah, um, I know before we go deeply, some people are wondering who are not used to us, uh, how come we are dealing with drugs and, and substance abuse. I think it's important for them to appreciate the fact that apart from being uh, pastors as well in your own right you are a counseling psychologist and in, involved in the life of helping uh, people those who are in that area as as well and uh, also part of the faculty of um, counseling and, and, and psychology so you deal with that a lot and uh, even myself as part of um, a family uh, therapist have a background in, 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 in drugs and, and, uh, and substance abuse and therefore when we are dealing with this I know there have been a lot of concerns there are so many people giving advice on everything until people are confused what is it that we can we can take forward and now that you've talked about the World Health Organization research that came out I think about two weeks ago of just the challenges that are confronting our teenagers, mm -hmm. our adolescents, particularly right now that the schools are closed and they are all together at home. And one of the challenges is that there is a greater need for our young people to be exposed in, in other, other things that are more productive than just being idle at home. Because when they are idle at home, they find a lot of opportunity to be involved in drugs and substance abuse and some of those vices that are affecting, that are affecting the families. And also with this uh, increased number of flats all over in the neighborhood, there is no place where even children can play, children can develop some cognitive development abilities that is helpful in their development beyond, beyond the school work. And therefore, one of the things that uh, World Health Organization was shedding light is how do we then help our adolescents, how do we help our young people so they are not able to get uh, entangled in some of the vices that are confronting them and one of those vices are drugs and substance uh, abuse. Beside the World Health Organization, right here at home we also have the national campaign against drug abuse, we call it Nakanda. They say that 28% of school-going children consume alcohol. That means there is a drug abuse problem in Kenya. And that really leads us to why it's been a feedback we have received and the reason why we need to talk about it. Wow, 28%, 28 school-going children are yes. using drugs and are abusing drugs and, and, and substance. Yes. What are some of the drugs that are easily available in our context? Yeah, we can even start by saying that drug substance is any solid, liquid, or even in a gas form, any drug substance that is taken in any of those three forms. And 
when it is taken, it interferes with the individual's uh, normal function of the body. And it, ha it affects the way a person feels and the way a person behaves. The way a person feels, the way a person behaves. So as we talk about that, then we can also say, what are the commonly used drugs in Kenya? One of them is alcohol. Alcohol, we know it's widely used. We also have tobacco that is also widely used in form of, in form of cigarettes in Kenya. We then have bang, which we call cannabis or bang. We have mera, it is also known as cut. We have glue, and you know you have moved in part of our urban centers and seeing especially the, the street families sniffing a lot of glue. We also have uh, individuals that use heroin or cocaine. So those are part of the drugs that even in our discussion today, when we mention drug, I think it will be important for you to have that background of the m most commonly used drugs in Kenya. And having said that, we are here also as ministers of the gospel to say that we, we are trying to help our communities and to help our societies to realize that when we indulge in some of these things, whether at an adult level and expose the, the, the younger children into it somehow, at one time, one day, it will have an effect on them. And sometimes it can have a negative effect or mainly, mostly, a negative effect. A few of those those people may have observed drug abuse either at the family or in their neighborhood but then when they grow up they may decide I don't want this kind of life but we bring this so that to say that really the word of God calls us to a place where we are more sensible and more sensitive and we want to pass on to the younger generation the right morals, something that will build them. Because our young people are our treasure, our young people are gold, they are the hope of the nation, yeah. they are the hope of, of, of the church, they are hope of the society. If we have a stronger young people, we have a stronger society and we can know that tomorrow everything will be taken care of. If we allow them to be consumed by drug and substance abuse, before long they will become very hopeless and they are not able to generate, they are not able to function properly and do the things that they ought to do at a young at a young stage yes Having and so said that, mm -hmm. um, uh, we need to look at what are some of the reasons why mm. why children are using uh, drugs and substance abuse mm. and uh, we, we, we realize that there are many reasons and, and we can take a lot of time just talking but let's mention a few number one is um, the whole issue of peer pressure there is this notion that young people want to to feel cool, to look cool, and to look that it is all, you know, they are part and parcel of what is happening. So their peers who are probably using drugs can can influence them to start using to start mm -hmm. using drugs because they want to identify with them. So peer pressure is very key. So as as, as parents, as caregivers, as teachers, as a social society, we need to know that peer pressure is a very key ingredient, one of the reasons why our children are using drugs. Very right. Peer pressure. Beside peer pressure, there is also something else that we call stress. Stress and other mental problems. When young people are disturbed, when they have issues that they are going through or they are trying to process and they seemingly seem a little difficult for them to find means or to find ways or solutions or even answers for them. It means we need to be around them and offer guidance and offer that support that they require to be able to manage the mental the mental problems that they could be having. Sometimes it's questions, sometimes they are going through things and even bereavement, for instance, losses. Bereavement can be not only about human life, 
it can be loss of items, loss of valued, th valued things. The loss of the school year right now, most students are, are mourning the loss of the loss. Yes, and that has a negative impact on the children. Yes, and why would we say that? Because they too are their age they have expectations so they were expecting next year to be in a different level of their schooling and where that has changed it means they are dealing with it how are we helping them right at our home to deal with it that actually is a very good sign of a stressful moment or a mental issue that can disturb a school going child and depending on how best we support how best we help them to balance up the the the, the issues it can be a source of great stress and that means that can be a lesson that would cause this child to look for something to calm their mind to calm their issues i have heard many times people say that they go to drink to get away or to forget something bad that is happening but really do they really forget it is just temporal because the following day they will still wake up and the same problem they were learning away from addressing will still be scaling or gazing at them so when children are stressful they have mental problems challenges. or mental challenges mm -hmm. that they haven't been able to address one of those reasons it can be a reason. yes yeah. mm -hmm. another reason would be easy access we realize that uh, particularly homes or areas where the drugs and substance abuse can easily be accessed some homes they are in the fridge or in the kitchen and uh, children can easily go and make use of them and when their friends come visiting and the parents are away or at work or um, out of town they, 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 they give their friends as well therefore that easy access can be a major major challenge right now when you go to some of these kiosks or shops you find that they are selling sachets of, uh, of alcohol which are very cheap or affordable and a young person will go and even buy 10 packets and put in the pocket they go to their room you will not uh, know about it the other day we saw in the news um, um, uh, in a school I think around Tika area where there are some biscuits who are being sold uh, to students and only to find that the government realized that the, the biscuits were made with some, were, some drugged. Were, were, were drugged and they sell them to students. So those easy access is also one of the major causes of why our children are abusing drugs. Yes, another, another lesson would be the media advertisement. This is where the use of drug is portrayed as positive in some of our TV programs, in our radio shows, and other media. And therefore, it, the, the young people get enticed and they want to try it out. The, like you said earlier on, that sometimes that what they think is cool or that what looks fashionable, sometimes drags people away or takes people away and they are unaware what it is they are getting themselves into. Most of the time when you uh, even talk to people who've uh, recovered from uh, drug addiction, they narrate their, and we have listened to most of those stories actually even when they are aired on our media. And you realize that it all started as a small thing, as a joke. We sometimes hear people say it started from home. I was dragged by my friends. It started from our, my school or from college or from, you know, all those, there are many forms through which. But that means when the young people are lured as though this is a cool life, it becomes yeah. critical. That's true. Mm -hmm. Another cause is uh, parents and relatives. When we involve our children, particularly family outings, um, in family reunions, family gathering, uh, some are gracious enough to take our children to, you know, to the drinking places. And I think nowadays they become very creative. They are not calling them pubs; they are calling them restaurant, so that uh, you know it, it 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 has a feeling that you know is a family environment. 
but most of the time the, the, the family environment is even not there. The children will be in one corner eating some meat and the parents will be drinking or the adults will be drinking or relatives will be drinking. And that has an influence. They keep on wondering what is it that mom and dad or what is it that uncle is doing? What is it that so and so is drinking and thus we are just giving uh, maybe soda or water. So that also is one of the reasons actually if you ask young people that we, we, we deal with is one of the reasons they desire to also test and find out what, what is mm -hmm. this thing mm -hmm. all about. So yeah. um, it is important to know that even relatives can, can influence our children. And actually also what, what comes out when you listen to most of those, those cases is that eventually those individuals don't just leave it at the, the point how they observed. If the parents brought it home, they will not only take it home, they will take it at home, but they also want to go and experience outside experiences. Yes. And so in their social gatherings mm -hmm. and networks, they end up now be abusing, abusing drug more oftenly, yeah. and eventually they may get addicted. And it's an avenue to hook them to them. To the, to the system. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So having talked about mm -hmm. those reasons, then we look at what are the signs? What are the signs that you can tell or we should look out for to see and to find out whether our children or when the young people are involved in drugs? Mm -hmm. We may not be exhaustive today, but we will mention a few of those signs that we need to look out. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that when you realize that your child is changing threads too fast and having too many threads and having a lot of engagement or a lot of talk, they are always on the phone or you realize there are some things that are being exchanged, even if it's just those short moments of going to, to be together and then they are back, but they have so many threads coming or being around them, then that could be a sign that you so look out to see. some new friends, particularly the drug abusers, yes. into their old friend system. Yes, because it's usually a, 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 a cartel. The people who sell drugs, they, they, they work in, uh, in teams mm. and in groups. Yes. And so there are those who are being trained to train to initiate others. And there are those who, it's a whole link on how even the drug is passed from one person to another mm -hmm. to get to their users. Mm -hmm. So it is not one person, it is a group of people. Mm -hmm. And, and they'll keep changing because they also don't want to be identified and to be noticed easily. Okay. So they will use different ways and different forms and that peddling, means... Mm. Peddling drugs. Yeah. Wow. Another way of uh, knowing one of the signs is um, excessive need for privacy. All of a sudden you realize that uh, somebody who was not having a problem being together, they just want to be private. Uh, in their in their room, in the things they do, they don't want to share, you know. And that excessive need of privacy could be one of the signs, not all, it could be one of the signs uh, of uh, drugs and substance abuse. And therefore it's important for parents to be aware when you see now your child becoming excessive uh, desire for them to be on their own, uh, you may want to check out and just make sure that, you know, everything is okay. Yes. Another one is um, drop in academic performance, both in school or at home. There are issues and there are times you will notice that a child has all of a sudden dropped. It could be one factor, maybe it's not the only, I know. Uh, performance drop can happen because of various factors. Yeah, can be, be yes, it can be because of sickness. It can be because of too much pressure. It can be because a student has all of a sudden lost interest to study, or they are at that season in their time they are dealing with a lot of work, or too hard. The subjects have become very difficult and very hard. All other reasons, but one of the reason could also be drug, that by use of the drug, they no longer are cons 
consistent in their school work. work. Yes. They are not able to concentrate. Yeah. They are not having enough time to read through and to be consistent with their the school effect, work. Or effect of the drug, because this is something new they were not used to before. Exactly. Now that the, the, the ripple effect of the immediate use of the drug is causing them not to concentrate on their class Yes. Work. And that could be because they are spending too much time yeah. either with pets or too yeah. much time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Or the drug is having a high effect mm -hmm. that is also causing them just to be in a euphoria mode and they're not able to concentrate yeah. with the issues of real life. That's true. That's mm. true. Another sign is loss of interest in family activities. If as a family you used to do things together, you used to go up country together, you used to visit together, you retreat together, all of a sudden uh, they lose interest in those family activities. So they keep on encouraging the rest of the family to go and giving an excuse, either they are busy with something, they just want to create an atmosphere where you are away and now they will have they, they will have their freedom. Yes, and as they have that freedom, they also begin to shift in their behavior. You notice there is a shift, and one of the shift could be they were very open, very truthful, very trustworthy, but all of a sudden, that is fading away. This could even be somebody that you were entrusting to keep the family uh, change or to take care of the kitchen budget and the, the balances and everything. But all of a sudden, money is disappearing. They are dishonest. They are dishonest. Mm -hmm. Or the, you are giving them a cert, you are, you're used to giving them a certain uh, amount of pocket money but it is being overused so fast and they are demanding or they are, sh they are having different stories to tell so that you can keep extending and keep giving them money and aware that this dishonest is coming because they are spending either their time or the family finances or even their pocket money using drugs and they do not want you to know and sometimes kids will even create a story that they have lost an item in school and how the school want you want them to replace it as soon or it is a friend's item so as parents, we need to be to, to find out exactly what has happened mm -hmm. and if possible even talk to the other party, find out and possibly the other party, they are not in the same group together. Party after party. Yes. Um, the other thing to watch out is, uh, as one of the signs, is the smell. Either smell of the breath or the hands, because they are using their hands, um, or even clothes. So a parent, a caregiver, will always be careful to try to figure out how, you know, you find some smell that is not smell, the, yakawa, usual. the usual smell. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be a leading sign mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, some of them are already starting to move into that direction. So it's good to be aware, mm -hmm. it's good to be sensitive, mm -hmm. and therefore just, you know, be on, be on, the, be on the lookout. Yes, even the offering use mm -hmm. of perfume, because they are trying to, off, to, to, cover, to cover up that original, other smile. Original smell. smell. Or yes. they start chewing like chewing gum, all yes. of a sudden they are always on chewing gum, mm -hmm. you Know, mm -hmm. at night in the evening mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure that you don't uh, notice you know, it's real nowadays there are even some that are being inserted mm -hmm. it's just a funny yeah. uh, we, world we are yeah. in where people are even especially for girls mm -hmm. they will they would use the tampons mm -hmm. and they are put into drugs and then they insert them that way you won't easily mm -hmm. feel yeah. the tell this tell even about the smell so there are many ways and another one mm -hmm is where they are injecting themselves mm -hmm. and mostly the injections are done on the inner part of the elbow of the arm mm -hmm. so just checking to see whether this person is offering or always covering themselves and not in a position to where you can easily see okay. you know like wearing short sleeved mm -hmm. oftenly you realize that this person has completely now avoided using that because they don't want to be discovered that's another sign. The other one is the increased talkativeness, mm -hmm. and you can talk about to us yeah, about all it. All of a sudden, particularly those um, somebody was always quiet. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they are always talking. They have stories to tell. You know, they are very outgoing. Um, and once in a while, they are laughing excessively, 
and you're wondering what is it, uh, you know. It's Especially to something that doesn't make sense yes. to the rest of the, the people. Yeah, the rest of the people. Uh, that could probably be a sign that uh, they are already into the journey into the journey of, of, of the drugs. And we are saying this is not all the signs, this is just some some of the signs. Yes. And the reason we are saying that um, you know, it, it is important for a caregiver or for a parent to be able to be on the lookout on this so that you can be at a place where you are able to arrest the problem much, 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 much earlier. So we look at how do we deal with drug and substance abuse, how do we deal? Because we've given you the signs, we have said the why they take, we have given you some of the signs to look out for, and now we will want to deal, to know how to deal with the substance abuse. Okay. One of the things is to note that any substance user, they need help. Why do they need help? They need help so that they do not tolerate and they don't continue on that path where they eventually become uh, addicted to substance abuse because eventually it will affect their output. That's it will right. affect, we already said that drug abuse affects their feeling, how they feel, and it also affects the behavior. Mm -hmm. So knowing that abuse of drug will affect their, their behavior, then it is a clear point right there to say they need help. They do not need to be condemned. When you notice that your son, your daughter, your cousin, your niece or nephew, and those that we are taking care about, even those around us, they are, our first reaction is not to condemn them. That's true. Is to fight. Love. Yeah, to love them yeah. and to make reach them feel. Them. Yes, we reach out to them with, mm -hmm. with a lot of love, mm -hmm. with a lot of consideration, mm -hmm. so that then. After we have connected well, we can be able to find means and ways of helping them. I, I totally agree with you. I think what we will do is, uh, because of time, we will want to end here. And next week we will be picking up and looking at some more areas that we can be of help with, uh, with one another. We can help our young people, uh, we can help our society, so that tomorrow, today, we become a better society, the way we are dealing with our, uh, our young people, the way we are encouraging them, and the way we are working with them. Why don't you pray with us? Yes, and as we pray, I think we bring this matter because we need to be one another's keeper. And being one another's keeper is being involved in what is happening in our community and feeling out and knowing and reaching out. So we are calling on us parents not to expose our young people to drugs, not to be that avenue that allows them to start experimenting early, then later we regret, we regret the, the outcome. And also to take care of our environment and care for our neighbor and care for the children within our neighborhood by taking care of them and by allowing them to live out their life fully. And our young people have a lot of potential. We just need to nurture them. We need to encourage them. We need to create an environment that they can be vibrant and become people that God intended them to be. As we pray, I would like to bring this scripture to guide us even as you think about the things that we have shared here. The Bible says in the book of Galatians 5, chapter 1, 15 to 17, but if you are always biting and following one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So I say, let the Spirit guide your life. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature want to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us the desire that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. The scripture right there says that there are those two forces. One is the force that helps us to do the right thing. 
and God created each one of us with a purpose to live out our purpose. But then we are responsible of taking care of our flesh, taking care of our, our cravings, the flesh cravings, and making and ensuring that it does not stop us from living out our lives. And that's why we are saying here that drugs, when they are abused, definitely the product of drug abuse will be that we hurt lives, we hurt many generations, and we hurt communities. So we want to pray that as a community we will be able to look through the things that we are engaged in and ask ourselves, are they going to bear fruit as a parent? Are we demonstrating as a brother, big brother, are we demonstrating to the young ones? The big sisters, are we demonstrating to the young ones? Within our neighborhood and our community, are we demonstrating what will yield good results tomorrow? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would forgive us for having caused the younger generation to go astray where we did not set good examples as parents I pray for your forgiveness and I pray that through your wisdom you will cause us to turn around as a society and a community where we have not modeled the right things for the younger generation that we are causing them to go astray I pray that you forgive us and as you forgive us Lord cause us to turn away that we will make a decision to turn away from our old ways and do the things that would bring direction, things that would cause the younger generation to move towards the right thing. I pray for your Holy Spirit to move even in our nation, to heal our land, to heal our young generation, Lord, that you would remove them and you would deliver them from the addictions of drugs so that they can serve this nation even as they serve you for why you created them. Be merciful and forgive us. Let your grace reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It was a pleasure hosting you and we are looking forward for next week as we conclude this series on drugs and substance abuse. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching.